<laughs> Guys, I have a huge and important question, okay? Has anyone seen Robert De Niro? Because I don't know where he is. We saw him the other day losing his shit outside the court. We're, in a gen we're trying to be gentlemen in this world, the Democrats. You are gangsters. You are gangsters. All right? And since the verdict, he hasn't been seen. Now, need I remind you, he's 80-odd, and he has a young baby, a one-year-old. So please, if anyone's seen Robert De Niro... Please just let us know. Last time I saw him, he was in a movie with about Italians. Well, that's the last time anyone ever saw him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what movie is he not acting like an Italian, right? Yeah, it's like there's that one dude, the Mexican guy. If you see him, you'll know the Mexican guy because he always plays a cartel member. He's always like <laughs> hard-faced and fucking spider tattoos. But I'm sure he's making a decent living playing a, a living stereotype, dude. <laughs> Donald Trump, guys. Donald Jeezy Trump has been found guilty, as we predicted on this channel. Out of the four charges that he had, the most useless one was the easiest one to prove, if that makes sense. So... The falsifying business documents one, that was so obvious. Porn star Stormy Daniels, he did it. He had sex with her, I'm pretty sure of it. He paid off, I'm pretty sure of it. Documentation, of course, how they tried to cover up the payment. I'm pretty sure of it. But it's a bitch-ass charge. You know what I mean? Whereas the insurrection charge, that is like, oh, dude, that is a charge. But that's probably not going to be convicted um, that's probably not going to get him a guilty verdict. So Trump becomes the first U.S. president in history to be convicted with, of a federal crime, JJ. First, he was the first to be charged, first to be convicted, and we're only talking one out of the four indictments that were served to him. He still got three left, and this one, of course, was he was basically found guilty of falsifying business records. It was 34 counts um, of this offense. And yeah, as we mentioned, he becomes the first U.S. president in history to be convicted of a crime. Basically, in 2016, when Donald Trump was running for election, a story popped up um, about the now infamous porn star Stormy Daniels. I'm sure she stopped. She's tired of being referred to as a porn star. Anyone out there that indulges, let me know if she's still doing it. <laughs> So her, then there was a playmate as well, and they basically claimed that they had sex with Donald Trump whilst he was married with Melania. Um, this apparently happened in like the late 2000s, so like 07, 08. Stormy Daniels was paid for the interaction. The other lady might have been as well. But ultimately what happened was coming up to the 2016 election, they started opening their mouths, and Donald Trump was like, hey, I'm trying to run for president here, okay? What's your problem? <laughs> and they mentioned what their problem was. And he solved their problem by giving them money. You know, money fixes everything, guys. That money zips on. until it runs out. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. When it runs out, so they've got a guillotine. Like, it's like a reverse ATM, right? You just feed in this ATM. And until you, and, and until you stop feeding this ATM, it's going to start screaming at you. Alarm bells are ringing. <laughs> 100% dude, hashtag me too. So that's basically what happened. He then arranged for his then lawyer and fixer, Michael Cohen, um, to make these payments to Stormy Daniels and the other lady whose name is escaping me. And it was basically in a catch and kill style whereby you pay someone for the rights to their story um, so it could be a story of we had sex, a story of abuse, rape, you know what I mean? I mean, but this stuff, I, I, I don't think it can be catch and kill because of so extreme. I'm getting off the subject. Catch and kill where basically you pay someone for their story, for the rights to their story. And once they've signed over those rights and they no longer have rights to it, you then destroy the story you shred it you hide it in a cupboard you put it in a, a safety deposit box never ever to be seen again and that's pretty much what they tried to do with the stormy daniels and the other ladies case gave them new payments and here's where it got sticky because 
it's all a matter of ethics and morals up until this point, because in order to reimburse Michael Cohen, his lawyer, Trump basically falsified business documents, uh, 34 counts of it. <laughs> so he wrapped up these payments in like legal fees, um, incentives, gifts, that kind of stuff. And that's where the problem popped up, because now you're using campaign funds to fund your personal lifestyle or personal issue being the Stormy Daniels thing. And that was when every single Democrat in New York was like, gotcha. You're not getting out of this one, dude. I don't care how popular you are. Accounting is accounting, dude. You know, the CPJ and the CRJ. It's this, It's been like that since before Trump was born, dude. Do you think Trump was trying to do what the government do and just do an accounting error? Sorry, yes. that's just an accounting error. Sorry, oh, that's, that's just an accounting error. Which one? The Sorry, six, this is just an accounting error. The the six billion dollars that the Pentagon loses every year. What? <laughs> the six billion dollars that was sent to um, Iran, which is turning into military hardware missiles to fire into Israel. <laughs> <laughs> so those payments took place to Cohen. Cohen ended up going to jail after that for, for some other perjury, basically, came out. And he came out like a woman scorned, guys. Michael Cohen started a podcast. Michael Cohen wrote a book. Michael Cohen basically leveraged an income off of hating Donald Trump. Because um, I guess he felt hard done by. Because um, Michael Cohen became, the you know, in the mob, there's the fall guy. It's like, dude. Five years isn't long, man. When you come out, you know, come talk to me, get you a job at the restaurant, making the pizza, you know. <laughs> and he came out of prison quite scorned. And I think, um, amongst other things, his testimony, I think, was key because it is, yes, a lawyer that's, um, I think he was disbarred in certain uh, districts, etc. But again, documents are documents. The consequences that Donald Trump could face. Um, first of all, we're going to be waiting a couple weeks for his sentencing, which is next. It's going to take place on the 11th of July. He has 30 days from the conviction to appeal, which I'm pretty sure he's going to do. And he could basically face anything from probation to up to four years in prison, um, should all of the counts run concurrently. Otherwise, it'll be something that, that'll be hilarious. Imagine if Donald Trump gets sentenced to like, what would it be, 34 times four? That's like 100 and, 136 years in jail. If they like gave him four years for each charge, but they ran one after the other, it's 136 years. But concurrently would be up to four years. A huge political, um, massive political point though is, in this judgment, if he doesn't, for example, go to jail, they could put him kind of under house arrest where he can't leave like his region. So he might be confined to Mar-a-Lago for the rest of the year, for the rest of his campaign. And if you look at the last, what has it been, maybe eight weeks or so that he's been, no, not so long, the past six weeks or so that he's been on this trial, he hasn't been able to go anywhere to campaign. Heads, every time he comes out the court, he, well, first he was thanking the judges, then saying it was a shenanigans. Mother Teresa could not beat these charges. And then he campaigns. <laughs> Can I ask you a question, Jeff? Yay. Can we put our ten, ten foil hats on for a moment? Can we hold on? Right. Um, where did I put it? Right. Here's, here's my ten foil hat. It's a, it's a tin foil. It's a stainless steel bottle. Cool. Okay. I've my got question my is. Is it coincidental that Trump's getting all this stuff, making sure that he can't run for president, but will become president in November? You know, it just seems well, too coincidental that he's getting so much publicity at the same time. Yeah, so you see, the thing is, with the publicity, he is Donald Trump, so he knows exactly how to use it. Um, hence, he campaigns at every speech after the courtroom. And this will still probably lead to it being an extremely close race. Now, Biden, remember Biden and the Democrats were so quiet, especially like this year. It was like, hey, debates and get into this. Biden, when are you going to announce that you're running? All of that type of shit. 
and they've kept quiet. They've basically been holding their cards close to their chest. And I think this was their flush, dude. I think getting this conviction, because like I mentioned, it was low-hanging fruit. Getting this conviction now allows Biden to run on the trail and legally refer to Trump as a convicted criminal. You know, <laughs> um, America, get ready for another four years because from some of the polls and, and analysts, and again, the election's about five months away still, but from mm. some of the polls, they're looking at it being so close that Donald Trump, pre-conviction, was sitting at about six points, so 6% behind, 6% uh, above Joe Biden, right? Mm -hmm. Post-conviction, Based on polling numbers, he's four points, so four percent lower than Joe Biden. So meaning that there's a, a ten point swing based on this conviction. Currently, it's probably going to even out a bit more because some people. It's it's now it's the immediate. Ah, oh, he's guilty. I can't vote for him. But then in a couple of months, some of the dudes might loosen up. But we are headed for a historic U.S. election, like. Historic, dude. I don't know a president that has been elected in jail. Yet, it's, it, it could happen in the free world, guys. In the free world. I think, Jay, you can put it off your tinfoil hat. It's affecting your brainwaves. Okay. Um, the Manhattan case relies heavily on the testimony of Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, who facilitated the payment to Stormy Daniels. The prosecution has presented evidence suggesting that Trump was fully aware of the legal implications and the false records created to disguise the reimbursements made to Cohen. Despite this, Trump's defense has focused on discrediting Cohen's credibility, highlight, highlighting his history of dishonesty and previous legal transgressions. Okay, guys, let me know in the comments. The greatest nickname ever, okay? You know what the GOAT is, right? Mm -hmm. Donald Trump! I'm sure it was Trump who put it in his lawyer's thing, but they branded Michael Cohen the GLOAT! The greatest liar of all time. Now, is that not the greatest nickname ever? <laughs> the gloat. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, keep it locked to the channel for any updates. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video. Got a whole lot of other content in the channel. More details as far as the charges that he's facing. But pretty much we're entering a stage where he has 30 days to appeal. He's probably going to appeal and we are all now waiting and seeing exactly what's going to happen. Jay, but you had some questions of, if he goes to jail, how would the Secret Service still be able to offer him yeah. uh, protection inside the prison? <laughs> so imagine, Do you think he'll go to a standard prison, or will he go to sort of those really nice prisons? To an Israeli prison? What? <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I think it's going to be a nice prison. I think um, if he goes, guys, the Secret Service detail, what's going to happen to them? Imagine Trump, like, in the lockout and having lunch with, yeah, like, I have seven dudes around. Can, being convicted, can you still vote? In America? Let's actually check that. I don't yeah, think let's so. let's have a look. Because <laughs> if that's the case, then all those fucking jail people are going to be voting left, right, and center for Trump, bro. Dude! Trump's going to arrive, like, every day with a carton of cigarettes <laughs> and just hand them <laughs> out, like, vote Trump. Vote Trump, Trump 24. You make, what is it? That's the next marketing thing. You see he had the sneakers? Now when he goes yeah. to jail, he creates the Trump cigarette. You know? And it's got like on the white paper, just Trump 2024, dude. Hand them out at the cig at, at the prison, you know, like it's uh, Shanks. And like you mm. say, watch the prison population put you into power. So according to this, the voting rights for convicted felons vary significantly dependent on the state. Generally, most states restrict the voting rights of individuals currently incarcerated for a felony conviction. Um, so the states with permanent disenfranchise, uh, which certain fel uh, felons may permanently lose their voting rights after certain certain sentences. You have automatic restoration of post-sentence, then you have no voting rights while it is incarcerated, and then unrestricted voting rights, which uh, a few states allow felons to vote while they're in prison. These states include Maine and Vermont, etc. 
And then the last one, you have varied restoration policies. So the answer is depending on the state, you yeah. can still vote in prison. And how wild would that be that Trump and can't vote? I guarantee you vote. that it's red states that you can vote. That you can. Prison, right? No, I think yeah. it's red states you can't, dude. Oh, uh, yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. <laughs> I think I it's the Democrats it. that are like, yeah. they also got rights. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but that's literally it. Imagine a situation where Donald Trump can't cast a vote because he's got a c- criminal record, yet can still be voted for as the next president of the United States. But something to pay attention to. Donald Trump can't hold his mouth. I mean, now he's going wild at the court because they've convicted him already, right? But when it comes- care. They haven't really put in that gag order, right? He, they, he got, what, four or five gag orders? And he's like, you know, fuck this gag order. I'm yeah, because he's gagging anymore for nobody, bro. Because he's been gagging gag- all my life. Yeah, and he's still getting fucked. So he's like, his nah. gag reflex is just too good, bro. He's the goat of gag <laughs> reflex. He's yeah, the groat gag <laughs> reflex the gro- of the all groat. time. Dude. The groat <laughs> instead of the throat, it's the groat of gag reflexing. So when it comes to the sentencing, there are various areas that they look at in order to consider whether they put you in jail or not. And it's, of course, the type of charges, testimony from juries, judges, etc. But a key point, guys, they look at whether you are remorseful for your actions. Now, in Trump's case, catch 22. Because (laughs) he doesn't believe he did it. He keeps maintaining he did it. If he wants to maintain, and, and because of that, a lot of people are still on his side. If he maintains that, he keeps his support, but then could be put in jail because the judge doesn't see him as having enough remorse for his actions. Whereas if Trump does what Trump generally does and prioritizes Trump and decides to beg and plead and what, 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 he could avoid jail time, but lose a significant portion of his base for basically kneeling and kissing the ring. So would that affect your opinion of him if Trump shows remorse so that he doesn't go to jail? Or do you think Trump should just hardline this thing? I never did nothing. And if you put me in prison, I will see all of you on the 5th of November when the American people will make their judgment. And ultimately, I think that's the one that matters because if he wins... If he's in jail, he lets himself out. If he doesn't win and he's in jail, he stays there. Thank you for watching this clip from the OG session. For the full episode, visit the It's Friday Forever YouTube channel. Whilst you're there, subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on so you're notified whenever we drop new content. And I'll catch you in the next one.